Infidelity is devastating to relationships and we know that there's so much information about infidelity and what it does to the partner who has been betrayed as well as the partner who actually caused the infidelity. But one of the things that I don't talk a lot about and I don't read a lot about is the stepping stones or the obstacles to what happens when couples actually try to make their marriage work. And to, in order to make their marriage work after infidelity, they need to restore trust. Many times what happens is the person who betrayed or the cheater, they will admit that they had an affair and they think that's a good thing. And I mean, if you make a mistake, it is good to admit it, but they won't take responsibility and taking responsibility is essential. What do I mean by that? I mean stepping up to the plate and saying, this was totally my fault, totally my choice. I did it and I have to figure out what I'm going to do differently so this never happens again. And so what ends up happening? They want their marriage to work. They make empty promises. They don't follow through. And in a year or two, you're in the same situation, making a bad choice you know, causing a lot of pain to a lot of people with infidelity. So let's talk about this because taking responsibility is the most important part of, of regaining trust in a relationship, but so few couples can do it. And not only that, they think they're doing it when they admit to the affair, but that is not what taking responsibility is. It looks altogether different. I'm going to give you a list of what taking responsibility looks like. And then if you go to your partner and you go, I really want to make this marriage work. I really messed up. I made a terrible, terrible mistake. It's on me, but I want you to work with me, please, to give me a chance so we can work this out. If you started out like that and you follow through with these, steps, I think you have a chance. I think your marriage can make it. And don't forget, most of the couples I work with, two thirds of them after infidelity do work out their marriage, but it isn't easy. And just because some people can, doesn't mean you'll be able to. So it's important you get the truth up front. So the first thing, stop the affair. This is an obvious, but so many people don't. They just keep this person on a back burner. This person has to be completely out of your life, blocked on all things. In fact, I would shut down all your social media for now until you get a good plan in place, which we'll talk about. Number two, figure out why you had this affair. I want you to make a list. I want you to put everything in that list. What was going on with you, with your self-esteem, with your confidence, with your current marriage, everything. You need to come to terms with what caused you to make a bad choice or why you allowed it to happen, why you would be so careless with something so precious. Thirdly, be ready to listen and talk because your partner's going to need to talk about it and you need to listen rather than get defensive, rather than stonewall, rather than say, I told you this before, you need to be there. You need to step up. You need to understand this is the process of grieving, of learning how to retrust again. The next, it's important that you understand your partner's going to go through cycles, cycles of anger, confusion. They're going to be up one day. They're going to be down the same day. They're going to love you. They're going to hate your guts. They're going to want to be close to you. They're going to be so angry at themselves that they ever believed you, that they ever married you. They're going to go through all kinds of things. It's important that you're patient, that you're supportive, that you're understanding, and that mostly you say to them, I am so sorry I put us through this. So sorry I'm putting you through this. Those words are really important because not only are they words, but your actions by being present, by being supportive, by listening, by not walking away are going to show that you mean it, that your presence speaks louder than just your words. Provide transparency. 
your partner needs to be able to say to you at any time, I want to see your phone. I want to see your Facebook. I want to see your Instagram. I want to see what you're looking at. I want to see, and you know what? If you roll your eyes or you stonewall or you get angry or you say something like, not again, you're telling your partner, I, I really want this to work, but only if it's going to be convenient. Because if you really want this relationship to work, you need to take responsibility. You caused this. They're not just doing this. They're suspicious because of what your actions did. And once you start changing your perspective to understand what that action did to this trust, you'll be better able to, to generously give them whatever they want. And not only that, I would not post anything on social media without my partner being included in it. Lastly, I think it's important that the two of you talk about your list that you made of why you think this happened. And that if there were things going on in the marriage previously, that you don't blame them, but you just make sure that you're stating, I didn't feel loved, I felt criticized, or whatever it was, so that your partner has a chance to kind of think about stuff. Your partner criticizing you is not why you cheated. You cheated because you wanted to, and you told yourself you deserved it because your partner was critical or whatever happened. But when someone is mean to you, that doesn't mean you go out and do something totally destructive to the whole relationship. If you don't have a plan and you're not working the plan and you're not following it through, the marriage will not be viable. It won't be able to make it. Most of the clients I work with make it, but they put a lot of work into it. It's going to take two to three years to restore this broken trust. And that's gonna be with a lot of checking. So make sure you continually talk about it. You keep following your plan of how you're avoiding it. It might mean you have to change jobs. It might mean you have to change houses or towns. Whatever it is, if you're gonna save your marriage, then the marriage comes first and you do what you have to do. If this video was helpful for you, please subscribe. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much.